Hello everyone, I'm Andrew Reed, Juris Doctor, Small Business Development, IT and Marketing Guru from sunny Victoria, BC. Follow me for new podcasts on beginner investing in business as I survive, grow and prosper in a post-COVID Canada. Disclaimer, my podcast and YouTube content offer very generalized information that has been beneficial to me. Always do your homework and due diligence and make sure that any moves you make are in your own best interest. Nothing in my content is any kind of advice and continuing to listen constitutes acceptance of this disclaimer in its entirety. Hello everyone and welcome to 100 Wealth Hacks that I personally use part Five, numbers 41 through 50. Number 41, don't panic. So you wake up to your own blood in the streets. That's a common term for a red day. The latest FUD from the Fed or global events has dampened prices on a macro level. FUD is fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And it's one of two emotions that can have an en masse effect on markets as a whole. The other big emotion is FOMO, fear of missing out, or in other words, greed. If you are interested in how to navigate through other people's emotions when uh, investing in the stock market and other markets, check out my prior podcast on the subject. So, things are bloody and you've got your finger on the sell button. It's better to cut your losses before your hard-earned money goes completely down the drain as the entire stock market boils its way down to zero. I personally say to myself, hold steady there, pal. These storms come and go. On the macro level, given enough time, the waters will calm and the skies will be blue. And there will be profits again for those who stayed strong during the storm. A characteristic known as diamond hands. That's right. Tip. Cut your losses when the fundamentals fail on a micro level. Uh, The company that you had done your due diligence on is getting crushed by a disruptive competitor. They're not even growing. They're even taking losses. Acknowledge this and react. Their stock price has been on a long-term steady decline. Get out of there ASAP, even at a loss. Don't hope against fundamentals. That there's that there is some risky gambling. Uh, this don't panic wealth hack can be applied to all storms in life. Apply this wealth hack liberally. Number 42. Take care of your skin, especially the skin on your face. If you start doing this now or boost your current regime, regime, you can save yourself from very expensive treatments later on that will be less effective than protecting what you have now. Guy or girl, it's irrelevant. Uh, Your youth, what remains of it. It is your most precious resource and the one thing that you can buy. Although, more than likely, you will be trying to buy it at all costs when it is mostly gone. Technically, appearance is irrelevant, but is it? Studies show that the most attractive people are more likely to be hired and more likely to be promoted to succeed. I've seen real life evidence of this. And at my current age, I wish I had protected my youth better. But much like investing, the time to start, if you haven't already, is right now. Protect the skin under your eyes, in the corners of your eyes, your forehead. Uh, If you're like me, protect your bald head. Uh, Kevin O'Leary is a great example. He takes great care of his skin and himself, and it shows. But even he likely wishes he started earlier, and you will too. Uh, So start today. It's the best you can do, right? Or enhance your current regime. What more can you do? It is much easier to protect than it is to regain. That is an understatement to be sure. Number 43. Books. Reading books. Almost all the wealthy engage in this activity, not just 
documentaries or videos or podcasts, but actively engaging in reading books. Now, I have wondered, is this habit an archaic throwback to what was previously the only long-term form of passing information and knowledge to another mind? Or does reading activate and exercise the muscles of the mind, thereby increasing our intelligence and total output of thinking power that our brains can produce, which would logically follow as an advantage in the pursuit of wealth? I tend to agree with the latter, the thinking power that it increases our intelligence. I personally need to read more books than I do, but still I am reading some books and I can feel the effects on my brain in nearly the same way that I can feel a good workout at the gym hours or even days later. Like all exercise, it must be consistent. Tip, set reading goals, meet them, and then reward yourself for meeting them. Number 44, get Credit Karma. Sign up at creditkarma.ca. Now, I am in no way sponsored. I am saying this because they have been, at no charge, an incredible resource to me with timely credit alerts and a way to track my credit building progress. And did I mention it's free? It does no harm that I can personally foresee to have Credit Karma. Uh, it presents potential new credit or extended credit opportunities. Um, most importantly, it sends you email alerts when there are changes to your report. That seems like an obvious free benefit to almost anyone. Note that Credit Karma only presents TransUnion scores. Uh, and TransUnion is only one of two Canadian credit bureaus. So Canadians, you can also get a free credit monitoring account from the other bureau directly from Equifax. Uh, Google Canadian Equifax or go to equifax.ca. Now the Equifax report right now, at least mine, is not nearly as clear or as helpful as the Credit Karma TransUnion report. It, to me, it looks like a halfway finished project in comparison to Credit Karma. But remember, different bureaus track slightly differently and the most prudent life course is to monitor both bureaus for any credit progress, but especially for potential fraud. Number 45, follow up after meetings by reaching out, by text, email, personal letter, thank them for the conversation and time. This will likely have them thinking pleasantly of you in a long-term way which, especially in small communities like most Canadian cities and towns, this could be absolutely invaluable. Number 46. Wait until the last day before you are late to pay your utility, internet, and phone bills. Keep the money that you had budgeted for those bills in an interest-bearing checking or savings account, like tangerine checking, or Coast Capital High Interest Saving. Both of those have interest rates. That way, you are the one making money off your money for the most possible time, not them. Tip, don't risk your bill money by putting it into something like crypto, for example, trying to get even greater gains. The consequences of failure will be at minimum late penalties. You are risking a budget shortfall, possibly credit issues, these can turn into downward spirals quickly. Find that sweet line of the last day to guarantee the utilities will get their payment on time. And then you can make yourself a little money in the process. Maybe only a couple dollars a year, but let me go ahead and claim this quote right now. The biggest rivers are fed by many creeks. Number 47. Create household efficiencies through organization. Hmm. I must admit, this is still an ongoing learning process for me. It's easy enough to do at work, but in my case, uh, the house has been traditionally more neglected, relatively. However, a boost in efficiency by a small investment in organization around the home can save your valuable time, and the payoff could be pretty big. 
Some people incorporate meal planning. They prepare their weekly work outfits in advance, and I admire these levels, and I hope to get there one day. But I'm personally on the level where organizing my shirt closet by type of shirt was considered a significant life victory. So you find the efficiencies that best suit you and never feel guilty for investing the time it takes to implement them because ultimately it will pay off financially and it could, in theory, boost your precious mental health levels as well. Number 48. Share your video streaming subscriptions with family and friends and vice versa, of course. Um, even if the big companies eventually charge for sharing, the charge will still be significantly less than two separate accounts. Or so I heard on a tech discussion show on the AM radio. So how this hack has worked for me is I pay only personally for Amazon Prime. I share that with a friend who needs it, and he shares that with his dad. Uh, Amazon comes for me with tons of other benefits, not to mention I own a small chunk of it. And I always try to support the companies I own. Now, Netflix, that same friend I just mentioned that's using my Amazon, uses my, uh, he covers the cost of Netflix, and then I get access. Disney Plus comes through a family member who is kind enough to spare me an account on there. YouTube, I bear the ads, so no one pays. Even if uh, someone did have premium, I would be hesitant to share a YouTube account because Google is too invasive. There could be privacy concerns. There could be unintended access concerns. So I get these four top video streaming services and all Amazon Prime benefits for the price of Amazon Prime alone. And I am immensely grateful to the good people who have shared their Netflix and Disney with me. Uh, building economic circles with friends and family can be invaluable, but it is not risk-free. Choose any economic partner very cautiously. Number 49, fighting the urge to online shop and know the best time to pull out. So, we all have things we like to buy online. Temptation is everywhere, and it is likely that your social media and your news is saturated with advertising targeted towards things that big data knows that you like. So you get pulled in. You are on the site. You've added the minimum needed to get free shipping, and you're ready to check out. I find, psychologically, this part, right before I enter my credit card number, is the best place to back out of this deal. <laughs> Close the window. You can always go back and you'll find your card waiting for you. But right now, right at that moment, before you put in your card, get out. Close the window. Think about it harder when you're out of the danger zone. Do you really need this item? Can you live without it? Is it truly within your budget to buy this item? Remember, you are striving for freedom here, and every dollar you invest can bring you closer to that freedom. Spending will only trap you longer. The choice is yours. Number 50, piggy banks work. Yes, they do. For those minimal transactions that you are doing with cash, put the change in a piggy bank style savings device. Every six months or so, you can take it and use it to cover an upcoming expense. Bring up that money in your budget for more investing or on occasion, treat yourself. Hey, you got to do that once in a while. Tomorrow is never guaranteed. Reward yourself for achievements. That is a winning cycle to get into. So concludes the fifth podcast of this series, 100 Wealth Hacks that I personally use, numbers 41 through 50. Happy saving. Do you have any Instagrams you would like to share with us before you go?
get the latest real-time updates from my Instagram at Canada Stock Market. At Canada Stock Market. Check out my entire catalog of podcasts completely free at anchor.fm slash Canada Stock Market. Anchor.fm slash Canada Stock Market.